What's up everybody? Welcome to Charleston Car Videos. So today we got a special video for you. Right now I am sitting inside of the 2018 Ford Explorer Limited. I searched for the highest trim level package that I could find out here at our Ford dealership, which is Ravenel Ford. And currently today it's this one right here, the Limited. It's a beautiful car. So I'm excited to show it to you. Also, as you've seen in the title of the video, we're going to be looking at this vehicle in comparison comparison with the 2018 Chevy Traverse. If you're shopping for Chevy or shopping for Ford and maybe you're kind of going back and forth trying to figure out which one to purchase, this will be a great video for you to view. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we actually head down to the Chevy store, I'm going to show you a few things with the Explorer before we go. Why is that? Well, first off, we got a nice little spot outside the Ford store right here where it's a little shady. And I can get out and show you these headlights better than we'll do at the Chevy store because they just don't have a whole lot of shade down there. Let's go ahead and do this. The Ford Explorer Limited. What has it got going on on the front of this vehicle? Well, the headlights. Check them out. They look good. They got that LED daytime running light. I know. I talk about it on every single video. But hey, I'm a car viewer. These are things I have to talk about. That's why we do it. So I'm liking the headlights. They do look good. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, they're LED. They got to be. I mean, I don't see any kind of halogen type bulbs going on in the low beam part, but on the high beam here, I do notice a bulb back there. So it looks like we got an LED low beam and a halogen high beam. That's fine. I mean, yeah, I'd like to have both an LED, but Ford doesn't give us that option, I guess. Not today. Down here, though, it looks like we do have LEDs for our fog lights. I've seen some people on my reviews in the past say, oh, I don't really like that right there. It just doesn't look that good. Personally, me, I like it. It's not a big square fog light, right? It's got some contour, some angles to it, which is pretty cool. Anyways, we got sensors all on the bottom down here because, I mean, basically, there's a lot going on when you go to park this vehicle. On top of that, you also got the camera in the front. Let's get a little shot of the color. I don't know the exact name of the color yet, but I will find out. But it's a really pretty shade of blue. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I like the shade of blue on there. And I like how Ford has added the chrome on the handles, the chrome down there, and it says explore. It jazzes it up. The actual name of the color is blue metallic. It's pretty simple, right? Blue metallic. And uh, it's got the 3.5 liter V6. Holy mackerel. Gets pretty good fuel economy. 24 on the highway, 17 city, average combined 20. Maybe that's about average on fuel economy, but hey. We'll save the price and all that for when we get down there, but just so I can go ahead and tap on it real quickly, this has got a Manufacturer suggested retail price of $47,059. We got the dealer plate on the back of the car. Let's hop in, let's roll out, let's go find our Chevy Traverse. And I hope they got one down there. They had one last week, but I don't know. Maybe it sold by now. They had a high country. That's the one I was planning on doing a review with. So when we get down there, we'll see if they got it. Let's hop back in. Now, as I always tell y'all, I am a guy that is, I am six foot one, 220 pounds, and I always like to check out getting in and out of vehicles. Pretty easy getting in and out. Not bad, a lot of leg room. Plenty of head room, okay? All right, let's strap in and uh, let's hit the streets. <laughs> let's get that thing on, right? A little tough to do sometimes with one hand. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, we're kind of sitting in an angle right now. I know it's hard to tell, but the car's kind of on a slope. All right, we got our Dr. Pepper, check. We got our phone, check. We got our camera charger, check. We got it all. All right, let's head on down there. Now, I'm going to talk with you while we're cruising. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ted. All right, we got our tag. Awesome. Oh, it's upside down. Ravenel Ford. Come see him, folks. Somebody said that I'm a staple here at Ravenel Ford. Wow, I hope they know that, the people that work here. Seems like some of y'all know that. Anyways, I'm a staple. I've never had anyone say that before. So whoever said that, thank you so much. I really do try to do the best work I can and be the most creative in my videos while working for these people. You know, to be honest with you, I give these folks out here more of my creativeness and energy on camera than I do for any other car dealership. I don't know why, but for some reason, mentally, I don't know. I think, you know what it is? I'll tell you what it is while we're driving. It's, I've worked for a lot of car dealerships and a lot of the car dealerships that I have worked for, they are like your typical car dealership. 
Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We got the dealer admin fees, the processing fees. We're gonna stick it to you. We got the all the extras added on to the vehicle that you didn't want. That's a $2,000 markup on the car already above the price. We don't put the prices on the windows of the cars. We make you go on the website and find the prices. We do everything possible to make the car buying process hard for the customer. That's the car group I worked for for the last five years. All their stores here in Charleston. So these people I've been with since 2011, I don't feel that way. They are so upfront. They really are car buying made easy. And, uh, and they've always been good to me. Not that the other group wasn't good to me, but it's just, in general, me as a car person, I really do believe that these folks are really trying to help people out and not always trying to knock each and every customer's head off when buying a car. All right, let's test out the actual power of the Explorer 3.5. Whoa. Acceleration felt great not overly powerful and i didn't mash it down all the way but when i needed the power to go and to get up on the highway without getting hit by another vehicle the power was there there's a vehicle i've reviewed many a times where it's having a lot of trouble right now with power and unfortunately a lot of the people that have bought this car which is the volkswagen tiguan a lot of those people have been complaining that it's underpowered. All right, let's give it a break on the camera for a minute. I will resume filming in just a minute. So I was just driving and I wanted to show you that quick thing we call blind spot monitoring system. So uh, I was filming that and I'm like, you know, this is a good time to show you all this because a person was in my blind spot. I need to get over because the dealership comes up on the left right here and that indicator light came on. So that's a nice little feature right there. I will tell you that the Ford Explorer and the Chevy Traverse have a lot of the same features and technology and safety. I mean, of course, the Chevy Traverse will have things different than the Explorer. And there's things I like about the Explorer. There's things I like about the Traverse. But there's one thing I really like about the Traverse, and Ford hasn't given it this feature yet to their customers. And I'm wondering if it's gonna be something that comes a lot more in the near future. My main concern right now while pulling into the dealership is where is the Traverse? I see a one over there, a silver one, but I'm not seeing the high country. Hmm. Well, all right, we're gonna go ahead and, oh, there it is. I think, well, hold on a minute. Ah, not a high country. Uh, that is a That's a 2LT with leather so that might work for the review today I just have to make sure whatever vehicle I'm filming against this one is as similar as possible that I can make it happen Okay, they got to be as close in features that I can get it to and in price So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, hop out park and get started all right, everybody, we got them set up. Now, let me give you a quick breakdown of what each vehicle is. As you know, we got the 2018 Explorer with limited package. Right here is the 2018 Chevy Traverse 3LT. Both of them, great vehicles. Both of them, got a lot of features on them. One's got some things that the other one doesn't. So this will be interesting. Now, technically today, the best would have been the Premier package on the Traverse, with the limited package on the Explorer. But not everything goes the way you want it to all the time, right? So we using what we can and doing what we can do to make something happen. And for the most part, we're looking at kind of creature comfort features and all that. So we're not getting too technical, but I'll break it down in layman's terms. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, now a lot of y'all, we're gonna go ahead and get this right off the front table here. What? engines what power do you have available on these two particular vehicles well we got the uh, traverse here with the 3.6 liter v6 pushing out 310 horsepower pretty good 
Then we got the Explorer over there with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost pushing out 365 horsepower twin turbo. My lord, that's a lot of power. So obviously the Explorer is outdoing the Traverse today. Now, let me tell you, before I just hit record a second ago, I was doing some research online and you know, there is a lot of different, you know, engines you can pick from on the Explorer and you got a little less on the actual uh, Traverse here, but there is two different ones. You know, you can get the four cylinder or the four cylinder over there with that one as well. But a twin turbo, holy mackerel, that is a pretty impressive engine under the hood of that Ford Explorer. Anyways, that's that. Let's go ahead and start looking at all the cool features and the wheels and the exterior, cargo, interior, all that right now. Bow! All right, so the rims on this particular Chevy Traverse are 20 inch. You got a 255 55 series tire by Continental. Let's walk over and take a look at the Ford Explorer rims, which look nice with a Hankook tire. And those are also 20s with a 255 50 series tire. So you got a 55 series height on the Traverse, a 50 on the Explorer, both rocking 20s. Personally, it's hard to tell which rim I like better. These do look good and those look nice as well. That's really up to you. Now, the front ends of these cars, let's go ahead and have a look. We talked about the Ford earlier when we were at the Ford store, so you pretty much already kind of know what we got going on up here, right? Yeah, now here is the Traverse, and I do want y'all to understand that that body style Explorer has been around for probably five plus years now. This is a totally new redesigned body style on the Chevy Traverse. Pretty good looking front end, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, not bad. This one's got a big big old projector bulb there. LED light right here. There's your highs over there, I believe. Then you got that nice big round fog light down at the bottom, right? A lot of people think of fog lights when they think about them, they go, oh, a big round bulb, like on the rally cars, or maybe a square one. Like we said earlier, Ford's a little different. It's a smaller bulb, which kind of reminds me of the Mazda CX-9 and CX-5 fog lights. They're just real tiny. But anyways, it still gets the job done at nighttime either way. Both cars do look good. They're both very similar in size. They really are. They even and similar in height. I mean, they're about seven and a half to eight inches up off the ground. So you can see right here, this is a good wide angle shot there of both vehicles from the ground level here. Let's get down a little lower. There we go. That looks nice. Now it does look like the Traverse is a little wider. I mean, it's got a big wide windshield, doesn't it? And then they got those big racks up on the top there. The Ford Explorer, well, it's really wide as well, but it seems like the Traverse kind of jets up a little higher on the roof line than the Explorer. And again, you got those big racks. Now, on top of this particular Explorer, you do have, I wouldn't say it's a panoramic roof, but you do got dual sunroofs. So you got a sunroof in the front, then you got one in the back. But when you're sitting inside of there, you'll see in a minute here that there's actually a big bar that kind of goes across. So you don't have a big glass roof up there, but you, both people front and back still get to see out the top. So that's fine. But again, I like a big, long stretched kind of sunroof, right? Again, that's just my style. That's what I like. But the Traverse, this particular one, you gotta have to bump up to the premium or the high country or something like that to get the dual sunroofs. And you know, oddly enough as it is, we get a lot of people commenting sometimes saying, I don't want sunroofs on my vehicle. That's problems later down the road on my vehicle. But I always kind of think, ah, is it really? I mean, I've owned many vehicles. I'm 37 years old. I mean, I've had most of my cars all have had sunroofs and uh, some of the cars I've had, I've put 200,000 miles on them. I mean, I had an 89 Honda Accord with a sunroof and it never leaked one bit at all. So I, I think that's kind of a preference thing on people, you know, saying that. And again, maybe they had a problem with their sunroof at some point. Maybe American cars are different than Japanese. I don't know. Now in the back back here, both of them have cameras. Both of them actually have the 360 camera view, which is really cool. So you don't have to bump all the way up on the Traverse to a Premier to get the 360 camera view. You got it. You also got dual exhaust on both vehicles, backup sensors on both vehicles. Here's the taillights, right? Anyways, then you got right back here, it looks like 
two different cameras. Well, there is two cameras. That's one feature that the Ford Explorer doesn't have. Basically, inside the Traverse, we'll show you in a little bit here, that rear view mirror inside the car can be a mirror or a camera to look out. Pretty sweet. Both vehicles do have power tailgate. Now, I went ahead and hit the button up underneath right there, but you can hit it on the remote if you want to do that and open up the back. Then here is the space you have in the back of the Chevy Traverse. Now, we will, the main thing we're going to do today is we are going to sit in the back of both of these vehicles and see how rear legroom is in the third row, and then I will let you know which one I think is a better pick on third row, being comfortable and plenty of leg room. But as you can see, a lot of space back here in the Traverse with the third row up. I can even tell you this, you have more space back here than you have in a brand new Tahoe with the third row up. That's pretty neat. Then you have more space down there. Let's go have a look over at the Explorer and see what we got going on, right? Because that's always important. Here's our camera just right there. Like I said, backup sensors, dual exhaust, all that. Both vehicles have wipers and third brake lights. Let's go ahead and uh, hit our button under here. There we go, power tailgate feature. Now here's the difference in the Explorer, right off the get-go. You'll notice how my camera bags kind of sit down low. So Chevy puts a flat panel right here and you can open it up and throw your stuff in, right? Ford doesn't do that. They just kind of leave it down low just like that, which is fine. And they look like they have pretty similar space in a sense, right? I guess they do. Anyways, I personally kind of like the, the rear end in the Traverse better because I don't have to worry about my stuff sliding and rolling under here and all that. Um, both of them look like they got subs and all that kind of thing. Now this is pretty interesting. Ford really has got it on lockdown with this power back seat thing where you can fold them down and all that by just hitting some buttons. I did not see that on that particular Traverse over there. And I don't even think they have that on the high country, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I get things a little twisted. All right, everybody, let's cut the camera off real quick and let's start taking a look at the actual interiors. Now before we hop in the inside, let's just take a quick look at the Moroni label. MSRP on this vehicle is 40 is actually 47,590. Now here's something interesting. It says here total before discounts is 48,590 and there's a thousand dollar discount from the manufacturer. It says equipment group savings. That's interesting. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Now, but on top of all that, Ravenel Ford does their easy pricing here, and as you can see, 47,900. 47590 1974 discount after all your discounts incentives 98 over invoice it's 43616 so that's a lot of uh, incentive there to buy this Ford Explorer one thing you'll notice on the Chevy first off we don't have an orange sticker for some reason the Chevy store does them but for some reason they haven't put it on yet but I will tell you right off the get-go that one after discounts was 43616 this one before discounts or anything is already priced out at 43710. Remember though, this is a 3LT package that is a limited. So it does have some upgrades in a sense. Anyways, let's go ahead and get in on the inside of the Traverse here. We're going to start out with that one since we were already in the Ford earlier driving and all that. And let's go ahead and hop in and take a look around. All right. Well, it looks like we got a Bose stereo system. Pretty sweet. Now it is hot today. It's already May and uh it's hot outside, so let's go ahead and crank her up. Just put our foot on the brake and hit the start-stop engine button. Now, personally, I really do like this here better than what I see on the Ford over there. Um, I just, I don't know, it just looks kind of fancy, doesn't it? It really does. But here's the key right there. It's got remote start. Is in demonstration. Huh. Connected by OnStar's high-speed 4G connection. Press the blue OnStar button to learn more. I always think her voice is just so tantalizing. <laughs> Thank you, OnStar lady, or Chevrolet My Link girl. Anyways, let's turn these fan speeds down for a quick second, because it, it's a little too loud. Ooh, it definitely feels good, though. It cooled off really quickly, too, just so you know that. That's always important. But yeah, here's your key. Got remote start, power tailgate, the horn button, lock, unlock, all that. Okay. Steering wheel looks good, leather wrap, just like on our Explorer. 
it does seem like I'm sitting up a little higher. It seems like when you get in the Explorer, you drop down a little bit. So it feels in here that you're sitting up higher, that one's sitting down lower. I don't know. We'll know more in a minute when I go sit back over there. But anyways, um, you got cruise control and all that stuff here and the multi-information display, screen buttons, voice command, all that. There is your uh, LCD multi-information display screen right there in the middle. Not too bad. I mean, it does look a little more plain in here, okay? Um, I think the Limited Explorer is probably a little more dressed up on the inside. You get inside one of these, like a Premier package or a uh, High Country, and you're like, whoa, you know? Like, whoa. Anyways, um, this is nice. I like that. Nothing on the column. No dial. That's good. Electronic park brake. You got some different drive modes there for if you're in the snow or highway or towing mode and uh, your cup holders look good nice and grippy in there too you do have two usb ports auxiliary and 12 volt you have the same on the explorer except for they're kind of hidden inside of a little area um, you do have another little rubbery kind of setting right down there to throw things in dual climate control of course and like we said earlier, we do put it in reverse. You do have the different camera views, as you can see right there. Looks pretty good. Again, 360 camera view is a really nice feature to have. Got the guidelines and all that good stuff. Okay, so that's not bad. I like the layout in here. I think it just it looks a little more smartphone-ish, right? You got 4G LTE built-in Wi-Fi. I mean, just all kinds of cool features in here. You can hook up your, uh, you know, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Do the same thing on the Explorer. So they're they're all pretty similar when it comes to that. I like how you can hit the camera and just bring up the view if you want, and then switch it around a little bit. Do a little switcheroni there. I can see the front now. I can see the back, and there's the sides. Ooh, and there's oh man, it looks like it's on top of the vehicle. Is that coming down from the satellite? I don't know how they do that. That's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. You can even hit this button here. What's that do? I don't know, you can even cut the guidelines on and off. So anyways, that's pretty interesting. Hit the home button, back to that. But anyways, that's pretty neat. Let's see what the nav system looks like. There you go, kind of got a dark view, right? I don't know, maybe that's because the headlights are on? Hmm. Let's see, if I cut the headlights on, well, there's the buttons. Oh, well, that's just what it is. So anyways, I'm sure you can change the colors and all that kind of thing inside of here. Now, I will tell you, up top, there's that little camera you can take this and go boom now it's a regular mirror now it's back to a video screen pretty sweet on star comes standard and all gm products led interior lights got it do we have leds in the mirrors it looks like we do three of them yeah got your handles got your microphones all that big armrest hmm got a big light in there and it's really pretty deep. Is there any more USB ports? No. So there's no more ports or anything like that in there. That's just, it is what it is. Well, hold on. No, that's it. Okay. You got you under control. Seats look pretty good, though. I like that gray leather. I think the seat is a little bit nicer design or whatnot inside the Explorer. A little bit of leather. It wrapped up onto the dash. Feels good glove box pretty big all that all right let's go check out the back all right in the back of the traverse on your uh, door panel here you got a cup holder there and you technically throw a bottle of water down here if you need and you got a little more storage there got all that going on um, this one has captain rose seats in the back which is nice you can get Captain Rose on your Explorer as well the one next door over there doesn't have them but uh, you can get them I like Captain Rose this is nice as well you got two USBs you have a hundred and fifty watt 120 volt outlet here so you can charge up some camera batteries if you need to you got your own climate controls in here you do have heated seats on driver passenger side in the front but on this particular model there is no cooled seat you'll have to again bump up to premier or high country or those higher level trim levels to get cooled seats in the front and then get heated in the back still no cooled seats in the back of cars just yet that I can find anyways how do we get back here right that is the question well, we're going to have to go on the other side back over there because that's the carpool inside. All right. Because this is the real test, the third row seat test. Ooh, it's so much fun. Grab here. This thing just kind of does one of those numbers, and that is a big opening once that seat is pushed forward. 
Whew, I don't know if Ford can handle that opening. I mean, that is, that's a lot of space. I mean, that makes it easy to get in the back. Let's go ahead and try. Oh man, this is no, not hard at all. Okay, wow. All right, so we're in the back. Let's switch the camera view around after we get our seat in position. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, my knee's touching here, but here's the thing, folks. If someone's sitting here, they can roll up and they'll still have plenty of leg room. So I, I think somebody will be okay in the third row. Let's switch the camera view around. Not bad, not bad. Not bad, plenty of headroom as you can see. We're good to go there. Um, we got air vents up here. Keep a little cool air blowing on Chatty Bow. We do have lights as well, right there. Okay, so that's all going on. What amenities do I have in the back, right? Got a USB port, cup holder, and a little spot to throw something there. Do have a back window. Okay, and then on that side you have a USB in the same exact setup. Uh, there's no armrest in the back though, but not too bad. Okay, again, if you got kids sitting back here, they are pretty much good to go. So, uh, and heck, a guy like me, six foot tall, I mean technically, captain row seats is the way to go with a third row because a big guy like myself can have that knee kind of right up in here, and that definitely does help. All right, how do we get out? Well, just grab that and then do that. Now, here's the thing. It's always a little bit, it's easier to get in than it is to get out, right? So what we do to get out is we technically usually scoot up and then grab this. But Chevy has put that so far forward, it makes it a little difficult. But you know, hey, you got a really big open in there, so not, not too difficult getting in and out. All right, now let's go head over, take a look at the Explorer back seats. All right, we're over here with the Ford Explorer. Let's have a look-see. Well, it looks like, um, yep, same side, you're gonna be doing this number here. Definitely not gonna be as easy as it was with the, uh... man. All right, I have to cut the camera off and do this one. Well, I could be here all day trying to figure this out, but I mean, according to that diagram right there, I mean, one time at this point you do this, but it's not working at all. Let's go see what's going on, on the other side. I mean, Chevy made it extremely easy to get back in the third row. Ford, they're making it tough on me today. I mean, what's going on here? I'm pulling, it's not doing anything. Well, you know what, folks? I'm not gonna get back there because I'm gonna tell you right now, right off the get-go, even if I do, there is not much leg room back here. I promise you. And you, you don't have any USB ports back here. You do got cup holders and a little more right there. But, but there's no USBs in the back of this Explorer. Chevy really is putting family first when it comes to the third row seat in the Traverse. I mean, we got lights and air and all that, but I mean, me as a car reviewer having to sit here and battle it out with that seat to get it to go move out the way so I can sit in the back, that ain't good. And y'all know, they watch my videos, I do this on the regular. Something's up with that. Something is up with that. I'm going to give it one more shot right now. I'm going to give it one more shot. I'm not joking around, folks. And we've done this before. Oh, okay. That has nothing to do with it. This does, I'm assuming. All right, we'll give it a shot. I'm already telling you though, it's tight. Oh, man, that's a workout. I mean, mom and dad, mom should not be struggling to get into these third rows. We give dad a little struggle. 
but mama don't need to struggle. She got enough to deal with with the kids. All right. Well, you know, here's a th here's a. I'm glad I got back here just now because I need to lose some weight or start working out. I gotta catch my breath. But I was. I am actually kind of surprised right now. My my legs are not that. My legs aren't really. I mean, it was more comfortable in the back of the Traverse, but my legs aren't really as jammed up as I thought they would be. Now, if you had two guys my size back here, yeah, we'd be rubbing knee knees together, okay? And that would not feel, I'd be like, Joe, stop rubbing your knee on my knee, Joe. Joe, please stop. I feel your ticklies, I feel your hairs, okay? I wouldn't want Joe's knee rubbing on my knee, okay? Now, Samantha or Ashley, you're welcome to r rub your knee on my knee, but not you, Joe. Okay. So, and uh, headroom is okay, but again, I really, honestly, it's more open in the back of the Traverse. Um, this does feel a little bit claustrophobic. Um, I don't know if it has to do with because it's all black. Um, that's that's something to think about. That car had a lighter interior in there, at least all in here. So I think that may be why I feel a little more claustrophobic. I mean, the window's a good size, but it's tight back here. Um, I mean, I like this, but i really rather have a little more area to rest my arms at. And there's no USB ports, so there's not going to be a whole lot of charging. You're going to have to be asking people to charge your stuff up front there, or you need to buy a charging cord that's, you know, four or five foot long. All right, how do we get out? Well, you're just going to do that, do that. Okay. And then Ford gives me no handle to get out, other than way over there. So, I mean, and then there's a lot of metal being exposed right in here, which also makes it a little bit concerning because it's it's very tight i mean look at me Ugh. man i'll tell you in the next five to ten years well next five years i'll have to have my son out here doing these reviews because that's too tight back there for me all right i gotta take a break i gotta go get a bottle of water Woo. That concerns me. So, I like the Explorer. I love how it looks. I like how it drives. I definitely feel a little more comfortable up here in the front, but if you really are a person that's gonna be using the third rows, you personally need to go and look at both vehicles for yourself because you need to make the decision, is the third row seat gonna be compatible for you and your family? Um, Anyways, you saw what I just went through. You saw, so anyways, Ford, when you bring out a new body style Explorer one day, please make it a little easier for us in that third row back there. I don't wanna have to bump up to an expedition and go in a $50,000 range and up. I wanna stay right here in this 40,000 range I don't want to have to bump up to the Expedition. I like a smaller vehicle, not a massive school bus. Right? Some of y'all are like that. Anyways, all right, we're getting to the end, folks. Let's look at a few more things, and then we're going to rock it and roll out of here. All right, so last but not least, the interior of the Explorer. Again, it's unlimited. If we had a Premier, we would be a little bit more apples, oranges to oranges, apples to apples, or grapes to grapes, okay? Or dog to cut dog, cat to cat. But this is a nice interior. It is. I love how all this is. Like I said earlier, the, the Traverse next door right there is a little bit less plain. This is more fancy. Um, just looks a little more expensive on the inside with all these screens and big screens and all that. Do we have 360 views? I thought we did. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I thought we did. Got to be a way to look around on this thing. There's, there's the back. There's that. Okay, hold on, there's a camera button here. There's that, more wide angle. Is there a front view? Now that's weird. Because 
There's a camera on the front of this vehicle. Why am I not seeing that view? That's odd. That's really odd. All right, well, we do got the cold seats, got the Sony, you got the Bose over there, got the Sony over here. Um, got lots of ports and things to plug into. Got a nice big armrest. I do like uh, the interior inside of here because at nighttime it has ambient lighting and everything like that that glows and you can change different colors. Got a little wood trim. Um, like I said, the color, the black is nice to have up here, but does make it feel a little claustrophobic in the rear. You do have sunglass holders. I didn't see sunglass holders on the Traverse, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, home link here. There is no OnStar, but you do have um, 911 Assist. You got a tiny... What in the world? Mom, I'm sorry. Again, the mirror is the size of your smartphone back in 2001. That is a joke. I'm blown. I, this is... Uh, how is my wife supposed to do her makeup with that itty bitty mirror? I'm telling you right now. She's better off taking out her 8 to 10 inch freaking Apple iPhone X and looking at the camera view than looking into that. That is a joke. I'm being real, folks. I'm starting to get upset. I was already getting frustrated back there. Now that really has gotten to me. Thank you for the USB port. All right, we got, I, I gotta take a break. Man. I, that's it, guys, I'm done, I'm done. I've had enough. I've had enough. The Explorer is a great looking car, but the mirror, that, that took me over the edge, guys. It really did. I mean, why can't they put a bigger vanity mirror for people if i want to pop a pimple i need a bigger mirror i'm just saying maybe it's maybe it's something stupid i don't know but that right there is enough for me the third rows the mirror i've had enough the decision is up to you okay so the decision is up to you mom dad single person whoever you are Go out there, test drive both cars yourself. I like both of them, but that was enough for me on those two things right there. That would push me over the edge to go look at the premier version of the Traverse. So uh, anyways, have a blessed day. I hope you enjoyed the review. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on the channel. This is real. It really is. This is no joke. This is real. You're not gonna find a car reviewer as real as me. We'll see you soon, everybody. God bless America. I'm, I'm serious. And God bless Kanye West. Bonus footage. <laughs> I know y'all been waiting on it. All right, everybody. We had a good time filming both cars, though. We seriously did. One thing we didn't do is we never even really got in the Traverse and just kind of drove through the parking lot here. Let's do that. We got a little dirt road back here. Let's just see how the 310 feels on the horsepower. I mean, we'll give it a little, little oompy oompy, loompy loompy here. Hold on a minute. Make sure the owner's not out here. If the owner sees me, I'm in trouble, boy. Here we go. Well, we definitely got smoke going up out of the dang rear view mirror, boy. I'll tell you, all right. We know, it's, it's got the power, folks, it does. 310 is fine and dandy. Anything over 300 is a uh, is a good thing for you, okay? You know, your Volkswagen Tiguan, uh, 188 Volkswagen, they literally, that's a joke. It really is. And we're gonna go review that car this week and do a test drive video on it. Because I've had so many people complain about Volkswagen's power in that car. You might as well bump up now and buy yourself an American SUV because Americans like horsepower. They do. We like muscle cars and you'll notice they're starting to put that muscle type type of feel inside these vehicles like this. All right, everybody, have a good one. Thank you for watching once again. And like I said earlier, God bless Kanye West. Mm -hmm.